Thanks everybody for coming today. My name is Denise Booth. I'm your employee benefit supervisor and we have several presenters today. We have Russell Lawrence with Kaiser Permanente, Alicia Aguilera with Sutter Health Plus, Lauren Bea with Western Health Advantage. I'll be covering some information on the HSA as well as Delta Dental and then Katie Huddleston will be talking about VSP. This recording will be used all year, so some of the information will be fairly generic with different due dates and that sort of thing. But hopefully we'll get all of your open enrollment questions answered as well. We have some information and some updates for 2015-16. Kaiser's premiums this year have remained unchanged, which is really pretty remarkable with the uh, history of just medical plan um, increases that we've seen over the years, which is pretty normal, right, for um, in that uh, arena. But our rate, we received a rate pass this year. Sutter Health Plus HMO increased 6%. WHA, WHA HMO decreased 1.7%. And the WHA 1800 HSA HMO increased 10.5%. The district contribution for the groups all remain unchanged, and there are some plan updates which will be covered by the carriers. There is paperwork that is required this year from everyone. <laughs> the dependent eligibility form was sent to all of our employees, all of our permanent employees who have elected medical, dental, or vision coverage. So everyone should have already received that. If you haven't received it, please let our office know that really confirms what coverage you have elected even if you don't have any dependents on your plan so please sign it and send it back into us the medical plan waiver form went to all employees who have currently waived our medical plan if you are electing medical through us as of july 1st then you don't need to turn that form in but otherwise we'd like it back so enrollment original forms are required and they need to be received in the Employee Benefits Department by the due date. So postmarks or placement in campus mail don't qualify. So please make sure if you're waiting till the last day that you either drive it over to our office or you have somebody bring it to us. For open enrollment, the deadline is 5 p.m. Friday, May 29th. And for new hires, it needs to be in within 31 days of hire. And for adjunct faculty, it's 5 p.m. on August 24th for the fall semester or February 10th for the spring. And late forms will not be accepted. So our rates are composite rates, which means you pay one rate for either yourself or your entire family. The only exception is VSP, which has a traditional tiered rate structure. And what this means for us is for Kaiser, for a 12-month full-time classified employee or 12-month faculty who's full-time or SEIU, the rate will remain 96.34 a month. For supervisors, confidential employees, and managers, it's $125 a month. So again, whether you're covering just yourself or a family of 10, your rate is the same. And as I mentioned earlier, the district contribution remained unchanged this year for our units. It's $1,130.16 a month for LRCFT, LRCEA, and SEIU members. For part-time employees, those who have an FTE of less than 50%, there is a prorated district contribution. You take the district contribution times your FTE to figure out what your district contribution is, and then you subtract that from the premium to know what your employee contribution is. And those premiums, the full premiums, are all listed in the part-time employee handbook. Um, adjunct faculty, their rates are also based on FTE, or sorry, the district contribution is based on FTE, and enrollment for adjunct faculty begins July 1st for the fall and January 4th for the spring. For supervisors, confidential employees, and managers, the district contribution is $1,101.50 a month. So coverage, what you are electing is for the whole plan year. So for July 1st, for open enrollment, it's July 1st through June 30th, 2016. And then new hires, it takes effect the first of the month following your date of hire or the first of month, first workday of the month if you're hired on the first workday of the month. Hopefully I said that right. 
<laughs> um, adjunct benefits are effective September 1st or March 1st for the fall and spring semester. And when you make an election for medical or dental or vision insurance, it's considered an evergreen election, which means it stays in effect until you change it or you um, cancel it. And you cannot change or cancel your election once the plan year begins or after open enrollment um, unless you have some type of qualifying event which occurs mid-year. For example, you lose your other coverage if you waived our medical and then you lose that other coverage, the outside um, group plan that you had, you could come onto our plan mid-year or if you have a baby, you can add the baby mid-year. You have only a 31-day window from that qualifying event to make the change and if you miss that window, you will have to wait till the next open enrollment period to make the change. So does anybody have questions for me on that piece of the presentation? Nope? Okay, well we'll move on to Kaiser. Hi, I'm Russell Lawrence from Kaiser Permanente. I've been here before, and uh, fortunately for me, there, there are really no significant benefit changes, so I'll be able to be very, very brief. I will take just a couple of minutes to walk through a couple of points and talk a little bit about the two benefit levels that are available to uh, staff employees at uh, Los Rios. This is just a quick look at the counties that we serve. HMOs have a very specific geographic limitation. The counties listed here, some of the counties are all-inclusive, meaning the entire county is uh, covered and you're eligible to enroll in uh, Kaiser Permanente. Some of the counties with the asterisks are partially covered. There's a complete zip, zip code list available inside our uh, packets, which are available through your uh, district office or at one of our uh, open enrollment events. Uh, this is a quick look at the facilities in the greater Sacramento area, which most of you would be uh, uh, using. We have three large medical centers, uh, Roseville, Sacramento, and South Sacramento. Those facilities are acute care hospitals with all the specialties represented and so forth, 24-hour uh, day emergency room and so forth. The other offices listed here are what we call medical offices. The vast majority of what we all need on an outpatient basis can be taken care of at these facilities. Even our smaller facilities have, at a minimum, primary care, some specialty care, lab, x-ray, and pharmacy. So in almost every case, unless you needed one of the high-tech specialties or a surgery or whatever the case might be, you can have most of your outpatient services taken care of at one of our medical offices. Uh, I've been told that 80% of our members live or work within 20 minutes of one of our facilities. And uh, where I stand right now in Folsom, that's certainly the case. There's, uh, there's a facility, it's not walking distance, but it's pretty close. Just a couple of updates. I mentioned there are really no benefit changes, uh, meaning the co-pays and that sort of thing. There are a few things that are, I guess I would call universal changes. Essential health benefits now will uh, align with the other carriers that are available through Los Rios where the um, out-of-pocket maximum, the annual out-of-pocket maximum, the essential health benefits as defined will roll, towards, roll up towards the annual out-of-pocket maximum. Then there are a couple of other points here having to do with kind of I put it under the uh, category of uh, preventive care. Uh, women at risk for breast cancer will have no copayment for certain anti-cancer medications when pres prescribed by a planned provider. And CT scans for the thorax to screen for lung cancer will fall under preventive care, as I mentioned earlier, for older adults with a significant recent history of smoking. And these just make good sense. Uh, so these, these things are some of the changes, what I call universal changes to the coverage. Just a real quick look. I mentioned that there are two uh, different levels of benefits for you to uh, select from. One is what we call the traditional HMO plan with just co-pays. There are no deductibles associated with this plan. I won't hit each line item, it's very straightforward, but basically it's a $15 copay for an office visit. If you're hospitalized, there's no charge. There's no annual or lifetime maximum uh, to the hospitalization. You cannot exhaust uh, the benefit. Emergency room is $100 if you go to the emergency room, and that's waived if you're admitted. 
uh, lab and x-ray is at no charge. So if your doctor orders lab or x-ray for you, uh, in almost every case, that would be right at the facility where you're seeing your doctor, and there would be no charge for the lab or x-ray. Then for prescriptions, uh, it's $10 for generic, $20 for brand name. Uh, and at the bottom, you can see the cost, which I think has already been discussed, uh, uh, the monthly cost for this plan. So this is the first plan. It's uh, what, what I said earlier, the uh, traditional plan with no deductibles, just copays. The other plan that's available has a lower monthly premium, uh, but it has more potential out-of-pocket expense when you come in for services. Under this plan, which is a deductible plan, outpatient visits would be covered at $10. There is no deductible for outpatient visits. However, the deductible applies for some of the other services, such as if you're hospitalized, you will have, let me find it on here, uh, hospitalization, you'll have a 10% coinsurance after you meet the deductible for an individual of $500 for a calendar year. So in other words, if you were hospitalized, you'd pay the first $500, then you would pay 10% of the cost of that hospitalization up to an annual out-of-pocket max of $3,000. And those, those figures double if it's a family uh, situation. It's still a very, very rich plan uh, but it does have some uh, deductibles associated with it. And the deductibles fall in kind of the category of, uh, of what we consider hospital services. I want to point out to people that the lab and x-ray, if you go to your doctor and you pay the $10 uh, office visit copay, if the doctor orders lab and x-ray for you, that is subject to the deductible. So you'd pay full price to that for that until you're to the $500 uh, deductible. Uh, prescriptions are covered and prescriptions are not subject to the deductible. So it, again, it's a very, very rich plan. In both cases, there are no claim forms. One of the uh, things that many, many members like about Kaiser, there are no claim forms. Everything's under one roof, uh, whether you're on the deductible plan or the traditional copay plan, um, it, it, it doesn't matter. All of the services are taken care of at Kaiser Permanente facilities. Just uh, one more comment about that before I move on. Uh, people often ask about, well, what, have, what if I have an emergency and I end up at a non-Kaiser facility? You'll find that with all of the HMOs, I believe I can speak for all of us, we're the same in terms of you're covered worldwide for emergencies. So if you have an emergency away from a Kaiser facility, out of the service area, you have an automobile accident, or you, you get sick or your kids get sick, go wherever you have to go or wherever the paramedics uh, take you, uh, Kaiser will pay the uh, uh, cost of the emergency services minus what you would have paid at Kaiser based on your plan. I uh, just wanted to address that. Uh, you may be aware that we have a very, uh, very rich uh, website, kp.org. Within kp.org, you can go to a portion called My Health Manager, which is very, very valuable and it's something that our, all of our members seem to really appreciate. With My Health Manager within kp.org, you can email your doctor, you can view your lab results, you can order prescription refills online and have them mailed to you. You can act on, a, on behalf of a family member, which I've done on behalf of my dad for a number of years. Uh, if you have kids, you can do it for your kids. You can actually schedule routine appointments with your primary care physician. You can look at your recent visit history as well as your immunizations and allergies. In addition, we have a portable medical record. It's a little flash drive for, the, for $5 our medical secretaries will put a summary of your medical record uh, or a family member's medical record on a flash drive. And it's been real popular with people who have kids who go off to college and that sort of thing. Uh, they end up in a doctor's office. They have a summary of the medical records and that's been very helpful. Uh, Out-of-pocket expenses uh, on the de uh, deductible HMO, there's a limit to that and the literature that's made available to you has the limit on that. Once you exhaust the annual out-of-pocket limit on the deductible plan, you pay uh, no more out-of-pocket for the remainder of the year. The question always comes up with regard to dual coverage. Uh, we recognize that sometimes spouses will both work and they'll have coverage and the question comes up, well, if I have dual coverage, if I'm enrolled in Kaiser twice, uh, what happens? Well, the, for now, 
uh, there's no charge. If you have two coverages, whether it's the uh, deductible plan or the traditional plan, um, it waives all co-pays for you. So if you have a choice of being enrolled twice, I encourage you to enroll in the deductible plan. It costs you less per month and you get all the benefits of having dual coverage under the traditional plan. Uh, no, no, no co-pays. Question about dependents living outside of Sacramento area. Uh, uh, Kaiser Permanente has a very uh, big service area in Northern California and Southern California. We have arrangements with our Southern California counterpart. If someone's a Northern California member and a family member, for example, lives in Southern California, they can use their Northern California membership there. Simply visit, visit member services and we'll give them a Southern California card for their visits in Southern California. It's a slightly different medical record numbering system, uh, but the coverage would be identical to using facilities in Northern California. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, everyone's covered for emergencies and urgent care nationwide if you're outside our service area. If you're going to be traveling, give us a call at member services and we can send you what we call a travel pack. And that's really nothing more, oops, uh, it's nothing more than uh, an envelope that contains the location and, and, uh, of all of our facilities nationwide. We are in five or six other states. And it also includes a claim form. The only time you'd see a claim form with Kaiser Permanente is when you do incur mer uh, emergency medical expenses away from a Kaiser facility. So if you are gonna be traveling, give us a call, throw that in your suitcase, uh, and we'll pay that claim minus what you would have paid at a Kaiser facility. Are there any questions at this point? Yes. So I know that you covered um, essential health benefits accumulating to the out-of-pocket maximum, but isn't it true, because they're on a, a July anniversary date, that um, prescriptions now accumulate towards that as well? Yes, that's true. Yeah, and that's a, uh, the, the question, well, I think you could probably hear it. The question had to do with prescriptions being an essential health benefit and accumulating uh, towards the annual out-of-pocket, and that's true. Prescriptions do in, are included in that. Thank you for asking that. Okay. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alicia Aguilera. I'm with Sutter Health Plus, and today I will be providing Sutter Health Plus updates for existing members as well as to prospective members. I'm going to start with reviewing the Sutter Health Plus service area. So Sutter Health Plus is an HMO, and we are licensed in uh, the Sacramento, Sierra, Solano region, as well as down into Central Valley. And um, the counties that we are licensed in is Solano, Yolo, Sacramento, and then we're also partially licensed in Placer, in Placer County, El Dorado, and Sutter, and Sutter County. And then also down into Central Valley, which is San Joaquin, not pictured here on this map, San Joaquin County and also um, Stanislaw. So we go by the live work rule meaning that you have to live or work and or work in our service area in order to be a member the only caveat to that would be a retiree since they're not working anymore they have to live in the service area in order to be a member and that would apply to your spouse and to dependents as well um, so they would be able to be members as well Sutter Health Plus utilizes the Sutter Medical Group Network as well as Sutter Independent Physicians. And um, all Sutter Medical Group and Sutter Independent Physicians are participating in Sutter Health Plus um, for those physicians that are located within our network, within our service area, excuse me. The hospitals that we are using um, in the Sacramento, Sierra Solano region is the Sacramento Medical Center. We have a hospital outpatient facility in Roseville and Davis and also um, in Solano Medical Center, which is out in Solano County, Vallejo. We also have Sutter Express Care Clinics, three of them in the Sacramento area, and um, urgent care sprinkled throughout our service area. And we are also contracted with Med7 um, urgent cares. I know, for example, in the Folsom area, so there's no Sutter urgent care, but we do have Med7s here that we are contracted with. Sutter Health Plus also has home health and hospice services and outpatient surgery centers. So we do get a couple of questions about um, what happens um, if I'm out of the service area. So Sutter Health Plus members are covered for emergency and urgent care 
um, if they are outside of a service area. And um, that's if you happen to be outside of a service area not quite sure where to go, you could call our 24-7 nurse advice line to help get directed to care that's near you. This would also apply to children that are um, away at college. They're covered for emergency and urgent care, and they would be required to come into the service area for primary care if it's needed. So for Sutter Health Plus updates, um, plan benefit updates, it's the same as Kaiser and WHA where essential health benefits um, now accrue to the out-of-pocket maximum. And as of 1-1-2015, across the board for all plans, um, it's an um, Affordable Care Act um, where the prescriptions also now um, roll up into the out-of-pocket maximum. That means if you go to the pharmacy and you make a copay, it's going to apply now toward your out-of-pocket maximum. And that's true for copay type plans as well as for high deductible health plans with HSA. Um, so another update that is um, only applies to Sutter Health Plus for this year um, is Sutter Health Plus refresh. We refreshed, excuse me, our logo this last year. So it would be on my right. Not quite sure where you're looking, but on my right is the. Um, Refresh logo, it's a Sutter Health Plus with the orange in it, and that is the 2015 Sutter Health Plus card. Last year's card um, is the card on my left, and that card um, will be discontinued um, upon renewal. So if you have that card and you're an existing member, hang on to it. It doesn't expire. All um, existing members and new members coming on in July will be receiving the card that happens to be on my right with the orange in the logo. So you will be receiving a new card. Wanted to review our plan. Um, plan offering for this year is the same as what was last year. Um, it's a very rich plan. It's a copay type plan with no first dollar deductible. The copay for office visit and specialist is $10. Um, if you're physician orders an x-ray, um, it's going to be no charge and lab is $10. For inpatient services, so for hospitalization or outpatient surgery, there's no charge. Um, the prescriptions, a very rich benefit. Um, we have a 30-day supply at the retail, meaning if you go into a retail pharmacy and pick up a 30-day supply, um, it's five twenty forty dollars for generic brand or non-formulary. You can um, pay twice that amount for mail order. Since we've been with Los Rios for a year, we have existing membership here. We highly encourage folks that haven't connected and utilized the mail order program to do so, to sign up. You can um, save yourself some money, get a um, 100 day supply for twice the copay of the retail. Um, a, a tool and resource that Sutter Health offers to their patient is called My Health Online. Sutter Health offers electronic health records, which is tied to My Health Online. This is an online tool. It's a resource for you to connect with your primary care doctor and your specialists in, within the Sutter, Sutter Medical Group and the hospitals, where you can email your doctor, schedule appointments, pay bills, check lab results. Um, you can do this if you're helping take care of an adult, like a um, like if you're a caretaker, also for your children. And now we have a teen program as well, as well, where you the teen and the parents can mutually agree upon um, sharing the My Health online platform. This is not to be confused with Sutter Health Plus member portal. Um, so if you're a Sutter Health patient, you would go to My Health online to access information about your medical records and your health. Um, Sutter Health Plus, we are the insurance company, and we have a member portal, and this is where you would go to access information about insurance. And this is where you can go and look up eligibility, your benefits plans. If you're not quite sure, you can't remember what your copay is, you can log into the portal to check your copays. Um, we have claims accumulators, which doesn't oh. apply here because um, the plan that we offer here is a copay type plan. And you can um, request new ID cards on the member portal. For now, these two um, resources are two different um, platforms, um, so you will have two different sign-ons for those. 
We do, as I mentioned before, have 24-7 nurse advice line um, that you can help triage uh, over the phone. Sometimes it's hard to know if you should wait a day to see the doctor, go to the urgent care, go to the emergency room. If you're out of the area and not quite sure what to do, please access the 24-7 nurse advice line. The number is on your card. Sutter Health Plus is a new entrance company and slowly we're beginning to roll out wellness resources and programs. Currently, right now, we're offering uh, free telephonic coaching for tobacco cessation and healthy weight management. We're having some success with this program, and membership is quickly growing into these um, telephonic coaching resources. So I'm happy to say that we're seeing a lot of activity in our wellness um, offerings so far. Um, since Sutter Health Plus um, Network is smaller than Sutter Health the system, which spreads across Northern California, it's very important that you access the Sutter Health Plus website in order to search for a physician. Um, you can search by zip code or by practitioner last name. On this screen as well, um, to the left, when you're looking at your screen, you'll see tabs for pharmacy, which is where you can go. It'll take you to OptumRx website. You can search our formulary. Mental and behavioral health, we use Optum Physical Health and physical and behavioral health and you can go to their website to search for mental and mental and behavioral health providers um, so those are two tabs that may be of interest to you when you are on this screen searching for a primary care physician selecting a primary care physician again you can search by zip code or by physician name you do have to spell the name of your physician correctly it doesn't auto guess for you kind of like when you're texting and it it just kind of populates these words that you're not really meaning to populate. Well, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't guess. You have to actually spell the doctor's name right or else the name won't come up. Um, and also, why don't you just define um, what it is that you're looking for when you are looking for a primary care physician. We get a lot of questions. What's internal medicine? What's family medicine? Internal medicine are physicians that are board certified to see patients that are 18 years or older, so adults. Family physicians are board certified to treat the entire family, so they can see your babies all the way up to your grandparents. They can, it's, um, a lot of families like prefer to have one physician for the whole, do for the whole family. So Sutter Health um, does offer family, f family practitioners. For your children, 17 or younger, they would be, um, you would be looking for a pediatrician for them. For those folks that maybe have left Sutter Health as patients and are interested in coming back, you liked your former doctor, you are still considered an existing patient of that doctor if your last encounter with your former doctor was within two years. So on the enrollment form, when you are selecting a primary care physician, if you're a new patient, you need to write, no, you're not an existing patient, write the physician name, and there's an there's a, um, ID number that's listed on our website that you would need to put on the form. If you're coming back to Sutter Health Plus, your last encounter was with your doctor um, two years, you can write that you're still an existing patient of that doctor, write the doctor name and the ID number. If you're not quite sure which doctor to select, um, you can leave it blank. We will auto assign you a physician. Um, if you find that you don't connect well with that physician, um, you can change your physician by calling um, Sutter Health Plus member services. Um, one last item. Did I skip a slide? Nope. Nope. Last item is what happens if you're double covered. So I'm happy to say that Sutter Health Plus is growing within this region. So I'm going to address two scenarios when it comes to being double covered. So the first scenario would be if both husband and wife work for Los Rios and each of you claim each other on your separate plans. So there would be your medical um, out-of-pocket would be no charge. Your co-pays would be waived if you and your spouse both work for Los Rios and you're claiming each other um, for benefits. The other scenario is um, since we are growing and um, in this area, it's very possible that you may work for Los Rios and your spouse may work for another company within um, the Sutter Health Plus service area that is also aligned with Sutter Health Plus. So if your spouse works for a different employer and they are on the Sutter Health Plus um, health plan, 
which plan would be primary. The plan that would be primary is whichever spouse has the first birthday in the year, but the birthday month, it goes by the first birthday month of the year. So if your birthday month was in October and your spouse was on a Sutter Health Plus plan with a different employer and his birthday was in April, even if he's older or you're younger or vice versa, it doesn't matter. His plan would be primary because his birthday is the first birthday month of the year. And so that's how that would work. Um, Whosever birthday's month is the first in the year, their plan would be primary if your spouse happens to work for an, another employer in our area that is also aligned with Sutter Health Plus. Thank you, and um, any questions in the room? If not, I'll turn it over to Western Health Advantage. I, I do have a question. Sure. So the person with the birthday month first in the year would be primary, but does that mean that the secondary insurance would pick up the difference and there still would be no co-pays? The secondary insurance would just pick up the difference. So if between the two it wasn't covered in full, there may be a balance and then there would be a balance due, but it just would depend on which type, which plan the other um, group was aligned with and then based on the difference there may be a different but the plan offering here with with, with Los Rios is so rich be highly unlikely regardless of what plan they have that um, there would be a balance but it just would depend on whether they're planned yeah okay good afternoon I'm Lauren Bea with Western Health Advantage Happy to be here for a second year in a row uh, for open enrollment with Los Rios, and I'm also happy that I'm not nine months pregnant up here presenting like I was last year. <laughs> so um, just want to give you a little bit of history on who Western Health Advantage is. We are a local nonprofit HMO carrier here located in Sacramento. We've been in Sacramento for 18 years, and we have been growing to the point where we're at, at about 120,000 members. So. We are um, unique in that we're owned by our provider partners. So we're owned by UC Davis, we're owned by Dignity Health, and we're owned by um, a medical group in Solano County called North Bay. So um, we've got a full network access um, selection of doctors you can choose from. Here in the Sacramento region, uh, which I believe most of you live within Sacramento or maybe Placer or El Dorado counties, um, we're also in Solano County. Yolo County, and then we go out into Napa, Marin, and Sonoma. But here in the Sacramento region, uh, the medical groups that you could choose between would be UC Davis, Dignity Health, which is the Mercy Medical Group. Um, Dignity Health also has Woodland Memorial under its umbrella. And then Hill Physicians, which is a medical group full of independent practice physicians um, that participate um, in the area. So lots of doctors to choose from. Um, UC Davis and Mercy have a lot of uh, one-stop shop type locations where you can see your primary doctor in the same building as um, getting your lab and x-ray done. So you can see your doctor, he can send you downstairs to get your lab work done and do sort of that one-stop shop if you're used to that with other models that you may have um, had in the past. So um, I always like to mention that and uh, the hospital systems that we have in place, we have UC Med Center. We have um, all of the Mercy hospitals, so Mercy and Folsom here, Mercy Carmichael, and then Mercy General downtown. We also have Methodist in Elk Grove, and we have Woodland Memorial. Um, and then if you get further out into the Bay Area, there's um, hospitals out that, out that way, but I think everybody pretty much lives here, I would think. So updates for Western Health Advantage, like the other two carriers had mentioned, we do have uh, the essential health benefits applying to the out-of-pocket maximum. So for us, those are three essential health benefits that in the past did not apply to the out-of-pocket maximum, and now they do. Those would be prescriptions, durable medical equipment, and self-injectable drugs. So basically, um, most everything does apply to the out-of-pocket maximum. Um, with the chiropractic and acupuncture coverage, that's available on both plans that we're offering now, and the acupuncture is considered a health benefit, essential health benefit, so the copay for that does apply to the out-of-pocket maximum on both of our plans. So um, an exciting update we have on the acupuncture and chiropractic coverage is that it's now available on the Western 1800 plan, which is the high deductible health plan we'll be talking about. So it's available on both plans now, so you don't have to worry about if I choose one plan, I get it, and the other one I don't. So you've got it on both. And the great thing about this coverage is you get 20 visits of each per year with just a $15 copay. 
you don't have to get a referral from your primary doctor. You could just go straight to the Landmark um, network, which is the network of physicians that we use for this coverage. So we have two plans we will go over today. The first plan is the traditional HMO plan, which is similar to the other um, two carriers that presented. It's a very rich plan, um, just basically co-pays that you would pay to see your doctor or if you have surgery, something like that. So it has no deductible and your out-of-pocket maximum on this plan is $1,500 for an individual or $2,500 for family. And the way that the family out-of-pocket maximum works is that the first member would meet $1,500 and then they're done paying anything for the rest of the calendar year. It, and then the other family members would have to meet the remaining $1,000 and then once the whole family's met $2,500 then you're done paying anything for the rest of the, of the year. So always important to pay attention to your out-of-pocket maximum. That's the worst case scenario of what you would pay in a calendar year if something were to happen. Um, on this plan, as well as our other plan, all preventive services are covered at 100%, so you don't pay any co-pays, you're not going to pay towards your deductible on the other plan. Um, so make sure to go in for your annual checkups, the well woman exams, well baby, um, adult physicals are all covered at 100%. Um, acupuncture and chiropractic we talked about, that's a $15 copay. Um, if you need outpatient surgery and it's in an office setting, it's just a $15 copay. If it's in an uh, outpatient facility, it's a $100 copay. And on this plan, it's very rich. If you're hospitalized, you do not pay anything. It's 100% covered for hospitalization. Um, if you go into the emergency room, it's a $100 copay, which would be waived if you're admitted, and then you have 100% coverage. Um, ambulance rides are no charge, so you pay, or you're covered 100% there. And then mental health, it's a $15 copay for out, outpatient services and durable medical equipment is covered at 80% by us, 20% is your, um, your cost, and again, that does apply to the out-of-pocket maximum. Prescriptions are $10 for Tier 1, which is typically a generic prescription, um, $30 for Tier 2, which is a prescription that's on our preferred list of brand name drugs, and then $50 for Tier 3, which is um, not on our preferred list, but it's a brand name drug that we still cover. Uh, we have the mail order program if, you've, if you're taking a maintenance prescription, so you can get 90 days worth for two and a half copays. Um, and that's that plan, so very rich. Then the next plan, this is the high deductible HSA compatible plan, and Denise will come up and talk about the HSA account, which is the health savings banking portion. So I'm just going to talk about the plan itself. So it's actually a very simple plan. If you enroll in this plan, you have an $1,800 deductible as an individual or $3,600 as a family. And um, you can think of it like your car insurance. So if you have like a $500 deductible on your car insurance and you get into an accident, you pay the first $500 and then your coverage kicks in. So it works similar to with this plan. You have the first $1,800 that you pay for your services. So um, when you have an office visit and it's not a preventive office visit, let's say you have a sore throat and you think you have strep throat, you would go in to see your doctor. The office visit charge could be, let's say, $70. Um, and then they order lab work, and so you're going to pay for your lab work. So all of those charges accrue towards your deductible. And then once you've met 1800 as an individual or 3600 as a family, you've also met your out-of-pocket maximum, so you're done paying anything for the rest of the calendar year. Um, I always like to point out, because you're a July 1 open enrollment date, that these are calendar year deductibles. So when you come on July 1, you've got until December 31st. Um, in case something happens, you pay towards that deductible and then it starts over again in January. So um, this plan is actually very popular with us. I'm actually enrolled on it. I had the baby on it last year. I met my 1800. Once I hit my 1800, I was done paying anything the rest of the year. So all lab work, um, prescriptions, doctor visits, anything after that 1800 is covered 100% by Western Health Advantage. And um, as I mentioned before, we are owned by our providers. So we have very discounted contracted rates with our providers. So when you go to see a doctor, let's say you didn't have insurance and their office visit normally costs $125 for somebody without insurance, um, our discounted rate is going to be much lower than that. It's going to be, I don't know, 60 to $90. So um, we have a website that is, it's choose WA, choose W-H-A, dot com forward slash oe for open enrollment um, i would highly 
suggest to write that down. There is a service cost estimator on that website where you can type in either a CPT code or you can type in just the name of the service if it's, um, let's say, a physical therapy appointment, and it will give you a range from low to high of what you might expect to pay um, when you go in for that service. So every provider we contract with, we have a, a separate contract, so we don't have just one set cost for each type of service, but it'll at least give you an idea of what you would pay um, for that type of service. So if you are considering moving to this plan um, you can, and you have treatment that you're going through right now, you can kind of get an estimate of what you're going to pay. Um, we also advise you that if you're on this plan, that you don't actually pay the doctor up front at the time of service. So what you'll do is you'll show them your ID card. And on it, I'm on this plan, so it says a $0 copay, and then it has a little asterisk that, that says after deductible. So show them that you're on this plan, and what they'll do is they'll bill Western Health Advantage. We will apply our discounted contracted rate and then let the provider know this is what the member owes, and then you'll get a bill from the provider that should match what, um, what we're saying you should pay. So um, if you are a member or when you become a member of ours, I also suggest that you create uh, an account with us. Um, you just use your ID number, set your password, and then you'll have access to review your benefits. And um, within that, there's an accumulator where you can see how much of your deductible you've met so far in the calendar year. So that accumulator will show you the visit, the doctor visit that you had, what your responsibility is, um, and what Western Health discounted. And then when you get the bill in the mail from the provider, those two should match up. So that's how you can track that. So value added benefits. Um, not only do we have great plans, but we also give you lots of choice and flexibility with our providers. So there is a program called Advantage Referral. And like I said, we are an HMO carrier, so when you choose to enroll with us, you pick a medical group that your doctor will belong to. So that could be with UC Davis, it could be with Mercy, it could be with Hill Physicians in this area. And then um, typically those doctors will refer you to a specialist within the same medical group that they belong to. So your PCPs with Mercy, you need to see a surgeon, you think you need knee surgery, he's gonna start with sending you to a, a Mercy surgeon. But what we allow you to do is be referred to um, specialists within any of our other medical groups. So you could say, no, I want to go to that UC Davis surgeon. I've heard great things about him. And your Mercy PCP can send you over to the UC Davis surgeon. Excuse me. So it opens up um, 2,500 specialists for you to have access to, which is not typical with um, any other HMO in the area. So that's because we're owned by our providers. We can give that flexibility. So Assist America, that is a travel assistance program that comes with your membership at no extra cost. You will also receive an ID card that looks like this, and it's got their phone number on it. Um, anytime you're traveling more than 100 miles away from home and you have an emergency, or let's say you forget your prescription, or you lose your luggage or your passport, you can just call them up. They will jump in and handle and help handle anything that you need. Um, as the other carriers had stated, we do cover emergency and urgent care coverage worldwide. So. If you're traveling and you're in Denver and you're skiing and you break your leg, definitely go in and get treated. And then um, you come back to the service area for any of your follow-up care. Healthy Roads is our online wellness tool. So this is a, a really robust website. It's got lots of great information. Um, you can do a personal health assessment where it'll ask you questions about your diet and your exercise and your stress levels and give you an idea of where you are currently and then ideas of how to work on that. So. Just keep that in mind, that's available for members. And then the mywa.com, that actually should say .org, mywa.org. That is the website I was um, mentioning before where when, once you become a member, you create your account there. So it's got lots of things you can do on it. You can um, change your doctor online. When you make the change, then um, a new ID card will be generated and mailed to you directly. You can view your coverage. Um, you can view the accumulator. Um, there's pharmacy information. There's actually single sign-on, so it'll link you to Express Scripts, which is our pharmacy vendor, without having to create a new login for them. So once you log into this one, and then you click on Express Scripts, it'll just log you right in. You can track your pharmacy claims that way as well. Okay, so how do I find out my out-of-pocket expenses? Uh, we talked about that. That's the accumulator on the mywa.org website. And then what happens if I'm double covered? 
Under the HMO, that's the traditional HMO, if there's two employees that both have that plan, um, that will basically wipe out the co-pays, so um, they cancel each other out when you're both covered on that plan. It wouldn't coordinate with the high deductible HMO, the HSA, So, but if there's two employees that are enrolled on the HSA 1800 plan, that becomes just one $3,600 deductible that the family would meet. So any questions for me? Okay, I'll turn it over to Denise. All right, and I'm gonna go fairly fast through the rest of the presentation. I'm gonna talk first about the health savings account. The Western Health Advantage 1800 HSA HMO, it's quite a mouthful, <laughs> but it is a high deductible health plan. And what that means is the deductible on that plan meets a certain threshold set by the IRS. It's high enough to qualify as a high deductible health plan and you can have a corresponding health savings account. You don't have to have the HSA, but if you're enrolled in a high deductible health plan and you meet certain criteria, you can fund an HSA. The rules are governed by the IRS and money put into the HSA is federal tax exempt, but not California state tax exempt. Unfortunately, the state of California doesn't yet participate in HSA programs. The health savings account is similar to a flexible spending account. We've all heard about FSAs. Well, it's similar to that where you could use money that is in your HSA for qualified medical, dental, and vision expenses, including the deductible on that high deductible plan. So again, keep in mind that the enrollment in the high deductible plan is separate from funding an HSA. And so when you are enrolled in a high deductible health plan, you may be eligible to fund this account. And then the money in that account can be used for that high deductible health plan or for other qualified expenses as well. The nice thing about an HSA is that it rolls from year to year. There is no use it or lose it rule like there is with an FSA. It's also portable. You can take it with you when you leave Los Rios or you retire. Again, it is governed by the IRS and it governs funding eligibility. So for example, you can't be dual covered on the high deductible health plan and then a traditional HMO and be eligible to fund the HSA. You can have that dual coverage, but it will keep you from being able to fund the health savings account. So it's just something to, to keep in mind if you are interested in the plan, you'll want to know whether or not you'll be eligible to fund an HSA. There are other funding rules, um, but that's just one of them. There is an annual funding cap of $3,350 a year if you have single coverage on that HSA plan sorry, single coverage on the high deductible health plan, you can fund the 3350 a year. For a family, it's 6650 If you're over age 55, there's an additional $1,000 catch up that you can take advantage of. So as you may know, the premium for the WHA 1800 HSA HMO is lower than the other plans. This year, it's $867.50 a month. So because the premium is lower than the full district contribution, Los Rios can fund some money into the HSA on behalf of eligible employees. Our HSA plan is administered by Custom Benefit Administrators, or CBA. So there is a district contribution for HSA eligible permanent employees who open an HSA through CBA. And for full-time employees who have employee-only coverage, it's $100 a month in the HSA or $150 a month if they have family coverage on that high deductible plan. For part-time employees, just like the district contribution for the premium, there is a prorated district contribution toward the HSA. So it again would be the FTE times the 100 or the 150. And adjunct faculty are not eligible for the district contribution to the HSA, but they can open an HSA if they're eligible to fund it, they can open the HSA through CBA and fund it via payroll deduction. There is an HSA workshop. It was conducted last year by Rob Hayes, who is the owner of CBA. He's a very funny gentleman, and it's a pretty great video to watch. Um, we updated it with some information for this year, but if you are interested in the high deductible health plan and the HSA, I highly encourage you to watch that video. It is on our website. If you are going to enroll in the high deductible health plan, it actually is required that you watch that because there's more than just the snippet I'm providing you today. Um, and it's got some great information in there. So does anybody have any questions on the high deductible health plan HSA component? Yes. 
Uh, I have one question, which is I know you can't have both the regular FSA. Uh, so in preparation for this year's open enrollment, you know, I didn't re-enroll for an FSA. So I finished it and pay and got it down to zero mm -hmm. by March or whatever the deadline was. So mm -hmm. am I in the clear for enrolling in this now? See what I'm saying? You didn't elect the FSA for 2015? Correct. Okay. Um, yes, you should be fine as long as you meet all the other criteria. For okay. example, there's another criteria that says you can't be enrolled in Medicare and be able to fund an HSA. Um, so you'll want to take a look at all of that criteria. The criteria. We did add a limited purpose FSA this year, so you could have enrolled in that and been okay. But that, what I had explained, that you can't be dual covered. A full FSA counts as a, a medical plan, and so you can't have that and a high deductible health plan and fund an HSA. So, yeah, so, and that is covered also in that video too, so that would be good. So, I'm going to move on to Delta Dental and I'm going to go fairly quickly. Delta Dental is a PPO plan for us. We are actually self-funded for Delta Dental, and Los Rios pays every dollar of every claim that comes through. Um, and there are in-network and out-of-network providers. There is a calendar year maximum that the plan will provide. It's $2,200 for in-network services and $2,000 for out-of-network. That is combined, so you can't, you can't do both. <laughs> um, but it is an incentive plan. So if you're new to the plan, you would start at 70% for Things like cleanings and basic services and even major services start at 70%. And then they increase 10% every year you utilize services until you're at 100% on the plan. Prosthodontics, things like bridges and dentures, are covered at 50%. And, and that is not subject to that incremental um, increase. There is no orthodontic coverage on this plan. Um, but what's great is that Los Rios covers 100% of the premium for full-time employees, and so there's zero out-of-pocket. And this is a composite rate, too, so you can cover your family, and there's no out-of-pocket. There is, for adjunct and part-time employees, a prorated district contribution, again, and that is in your packet. So just keep in mind, for in and out of network, in-network and out-of-network coverage, that the in-network dentists are contracted with Delta Dental, and so they have to write off the difference between what they're charging and what Delta Dental says is reasonable and customary or what is contracted to pay. And out-of-network dentists don't necessarily have to or won't necessarily write off the difference. So there may be a little more than your 30% or 20% that you need to pay. Delta Dental has a website that's great. It has the dentist directory. There's benefits and eligibility information, claim status, a fee finder, and even a printable ID card. Because if you enroll in dental, you won't get an ID card, but here's how you can print it for yourself. They're also encouraging us to go paperless and print documents if we need and just look for what we need online in terms of claims, status, that sort of thing. And they also have other um, avenues in which we can find out more about dental health and trends in dental and they actually have an app for your smartphone which has a toothbrush timer which I hear is could be really fun for kids. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions on dental? Yay! Question. <laughs> um, I have a question. So let's say my current dentist that I like to use all the time mm -hmm. is considered at a network mm -hmm. non-delta premier dentist. Uh, can I switch to a PPO dentist and at least get that additional $200? Let's say I've already met my $2,000 calendar year maximum out of network. Can I switch to another dentist that's considered a PPO to get that extra $200? Yes. Good question. <laughs> and so now Katie's going to talk a little bit about VSP. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm from EPIC, but I'm going to here represent VSP and talk a little bit about the district's plans and what they have available to date. So the district offers two plans currently, a basic plan or what we see in the industry, a more traditional plan that is um, you can have exams every 12 months, you can get lenses every 12 months, and then your frames can be provided every two years. So that's the basic plan that the district has. It has a $120 frame allowance and or 
uh, contact lens allowance if that's something that you're interested. You can't get both frames and contacts. It has to be one or the other. However, you can use the flexible spending account if you would like to purchase one of those. So you could set money aside if you wanted to get contacts this year and frames. You could use the VSP benefits for a portion of that um, and then for whichever coverage that you wanted. The district also has what we consider a buy-up plan. The plan um, is richer than that basic plan. You can get all of your services one time every 12 months. So you have an exam, you have your frames, and you have your lenses every 12 months. That's what's available to you. And the frame allowance on that is $150 versus the basic plan, which is at $120. On both of these plans, um, the district also offers a primary eye care benefit, which is really nice through VSP. So let's say I had pink eye and I didn't want to go into urgent care. I didn't want to go and see my physician. I have the ability to call my eye doctor, get in, see an, uh, him for an appointment. He can diagnose my pink eye, give me a prescription. I pay a $20 copayment. It does not count towards the plan. I can go in for any eye primary eye care services as many times a year as I need to, as long as it falls under that category. So it doesn't count against my exam or anything to that respect. Also on the basic plan, there is a, 20, a $10 copayment if you have an eye exam, uh, $20 if you get any materials, which would be your lenses or your frames. And then on the buy-up plan, it's only a $25 copayment if you um, have an eye exam. The other thing about the VSP program that I want to point out is that the district does require a two-year lock-in for this and the dental program for that matter. So once you enroll in one of these plans, you have to stay enrolled in that plan for two years. After that time, you can disenroll um, into the program, but I just wanted to point that out that that is a difference for the district. Um, it's best to go on to www.vsp.com to find a provider that's either near your work or home location, whatever's going to meet your needs the best. They also have um, other tools where you can find out what type of um, frames that are available in their selection. Also, you can call the customer service number that is listed there. Questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I'm going to wrap it up with some resources so you have um, some idea of where to go to get some additional information. This week we have the carriers at each of the sites. Um, so for anyone here at Folsom today, we do have the carriers um, here. And the Los Rios Employee Benefits website has a wealth of information. We have all the forms you might need. There's all the recent communications. Um, and everything out there I'm going to show you right now. Our website, here's our main page. As you see on the left, there's the recent communications link, and that's where you can find everything, including the, the benefits guides that we sent out, the pink packets and the memos. The, there's a link to the vendor websites there at the left. And then on the right is a list of all of the employees in the employee benefits um, office and our contact information. The vendor contacts, as I said, this is a great one-stop shop. It's a nice page that has all of the benefits vendors and all of their contact information with links to their websites. There is a My Benefits resource through Epic, which is a fantastic site. Um, some of the things are duplicated from what we have on our site, but one of the things that's unique is this. It's a Compare Plans link. And if you go there, you can select the plans that you want to compare, and you can see a side-by-side -side comparison. For example, this is a side-by-side -side comparison of the Kaiser, Sutter, and WHA HMO plans for 2015-16, which is a great one-stop shop here comparison of line-by-line -line things, including co-payments and emergency room services and durable medical equipment and all that sort of thing. So um, that's a great resource for you. Other resources, this is brand new. Keenan and Associates offers something called Keenan Direct. They actually opened a site in Rancho Cordova to offer assistance for individual coverage. So if you, maybe it's a, you're an adjunct employee who doesn't yet qualify for our benefits or maybe a part-time employee or actually anybody. I had someone call the other day who has a mom moving in with them who needs some individual medical insurance and Keenan Direct is a great resource because they can help with covered California enrollment or directly with individual carriers. So um, any of our employees are welcome to give them a call if they have individual insurance needs. And just a reminder that due dates for open enrollment, the due date is 5 p.m. on Friday, May 29th. 
for new hires is within 31 days of hire. Adjunct faculty, it's 5 p.m. August 24th for the fall and February 10th for the spring. And forms must be received in the Employee Benefits Department by that deadline. Postmarks and placement in campus mail do not count. Emails don't count and faxes don't qualify. So please make sure the original forms are in our office. And um, forms are required this year. Again, the dependent eligibility form during open enrollment only and the medical plan waiver form is required regardless of the time of year if you're waiving medical. So are there any other questions? Nope, well I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. Thanks so much and have a great day.